Tonight, we're going to talk about bloating and the consistency of our stools. Also, the story of a man who had such severe irritable bowel syndrome that he didn't eat or drink for long periods of time. It's all about our guts on tonight's episode of Let's, Let's talk, talk About, about Health. health. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Let's Talk About Health. Now, Mike, I've got a very specific question for you. Okay. How often do you pass gas? I, we all pass gas, and uh, I generally like to do it in elevators. Oh, my you God, know? you're one of those. <laughs> and then like you have to... to look around and go, oh, who was it? I guess pretty often then. Yeah. I yeah? Mean, I, I try, I try. How about you? Uh, often enough, Okay. I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's a weird thing to just admit, right? Well, let's go ahead and see if we can get our guests to admit it. We have a great panel today. We have Dr. Gui. We've got Hazel and Zane. Come hey on out, guys. guys. Hi. 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 <laughs> Um, Thank you so much topic. for joining us. Hi. 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 Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. So the question will be posed to our guests first. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about, well, first, Zane. Yeah. Bloating. Do you get bloated a lot? I do, actually. I think especially so if I were to eat my favorite food, which is Korean barbecue, Ooh. all the time, I will feel bloated. And I would think that it is just, oh, there's too much air. Do you think that's because of the garlic that's in Korean barbecue? It's a lot of garlic, right? Like, I'm not sure if it's the garlic or is it me eating too fast? Do you take dates there then or no? Of course I do. Of course I do, but, <laughs> but is then it... then you're going to be gassy, right? <laughs> but it's not like the smelly kind. It's like it's the... It's just the air kind. It's the air kind. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the air kind smells. But Hazel, what about you? Um, I actually don't think I experience bloating a lot. Okay. I mean, as female artists, right, we are so used to, like, Sucking our bellies in. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know if it's because of this reason. I don't feel bloated. Okay. Often. Right. But when I'm on my periods, sometimes okay. you get cramps. Mm. Sometimes it doesn't, if we're lucky. Hey, do we have a doctor here? <laughs> <laughs> here we are having this conversation. You're probably just thinking, anytime, guys, I'll. Uh, let's go. So, what is it with the Korean barbecue? I think it's the garlic. But there's another um, food that you often eat with uh, barbecue or anything with Korean. Kimchi. <gasps> cabbage. Really? Is it because it's cabbage or the other stuff that's on the kimchi? The cabbage. Basically, cabbage is a high gas producing food. And what I think often is overlooked is that gas can produce pain. Okay. Can produce a lot of pain. Sure. So when it moves from bloating to pain, that's when you know you, you get very distressed, right? Mm. Yeah, so like sometimes we have people who have intestinal obstruction. Right. And then no gas is being passed, and that's when we really worry. What happens when, you know, you are bloated and you have severe abdominal pain? Mm. Yeah, if it keeps happening, mm. then one of the uh, possible conditions would be irritable bowel syndrome or mm -hmm. IBS. Essentially, IBS means you've got symptoms that are very distressing coming from your bowels, but there's no, like, a serious condition that you can... Uh, pin it on, okay. like, you know, totally explain it by that. So, like, you don't have uh, infection, you don't have ulcers, you don't have inflammation, you don't have cancer, but somehow just getting a lot of pain, bloating, and, and your bowels are, like, uh, irregular or disrupted. I think everybody has IBS. It's just a question of how severe and yeah. how you're affected and, and what type of IBS someone has. So, like, for the ladies, typically, they will get the constipated type of irritable bowel. Mm. For guys, it's diarrhea, irritable yeah. bowel. And for some people with IBS, they suffer a lot of pain and those are the most distressing because obviously yeah, that would definitely really impairs your quality of life. When you do go to the toilet, the consistency of your poop also says a lot about you. Yes. Oh, like mm. texture? You know, whether Colour. it's hard or soft. Uh -uh. Or, you know, and, and it says a lot about you, but they all honestly kind of look the same to me. Really? So, yeah. Mm. I oh, guess. then you, you need to go over to ratemypoo.com. That is <laughs> one of the best signs. Types, uh, you guys ever been there? No, no. my God, oh, you. Oh, like... Doc. No, when, when I was doing my research, I had a whole freezer of people's poops. Huh? Right. We will ask them to collect it and then bring it in, then we will freeze it and then for later an analysis. So that's how you started RateMyPoo.com? <laughs> <laughs> got all the uh, <laughs> pictures. <laughs> so uh, is, there, is there a chart or something that for the, so you would know what texture poo is bad mm. or exactly. color? Or... So this, this town in England, Bristol, mm -hmm. somebody there, this great professor came up with this idea of uh, typing stools. Okay. So mm -hmm. now we've got this uh, method called the Bristol stool scale form. 
Ah, oh, okay. Please the Bristol. Me. Yeah. Well, Bristol you know what? As a matter of fact, we're going to enlighten you because we're going to take it right over there to our setup where we have a bunch of stool. <laughs> okay, so the production team has gone through the very painstaking process of creating all these different turds for us. And these are in uh, accordance with the Bristol stool charts. Don't worry. <laughs> They didn't produce these themselves. <laughs> they just made them. They are fake. So. They are. They Don't are be grossed out. made yep. of chocolate and peanut butter, oh. apparently. Ooh. So how many you can eat? No. I, no. If you want, no. you can no. have no. it. <laughs> now that I've seen all the different consistencies, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Zane, Hazel, what was your last poop like if you had to pick from one of these options? Okay, Hazel, you go first. I have to be very honest, okay? It's got to be between type 1 and 2. Like, I had a hard time wow. in the toilet. I had a hard time pushing it out. And okay. I was like, mm, why is and this I, so hot? I understand. You know? I understand exactly where you're coming from because I struggle as well. Uh -huh. And the struggle is real. But I feel like Zane is going to go like, hey, you know, life's <laughs> easy for me. Yeah. Mine is on the other end of the spectrum, okay. which is either a type 6 or a type 7. You see? What? This easy. morning, it was a type 6. <laughs> what? I remember correctly. Looks like good to know, good to know. But pretty healthy, I would say. I'm so nice. envious. Yeah, <laughs> so am I. Why do y'all have it so easy? Yeah. Kat, what was your last yeah. one like? What was yours? I, I, I think, what's this? T type 3? <laughs> the struggle was real. <laughs> it looks painful to come up. Yeah, yeah, it was. What about you, Mike? <laughs> uh, it all depends. Right now, the last month has been like a type 3 and 4, mm. but uh, darker. And then, uh, but usually, yeah, I'll go for like a, I, I like to go for type 7 with, you know, maybe with a type 2 starter. And, uh, <laughs> you know, just, uh, what? And then finish it off with a nice little uh, Chianti. Uh. <laughs> okay, so can you, Dr. Gui, can you describe each type? Yep. Tell us okay, so what's this, good and what's not. This Bristol stool scale was developed uh, according to the transit time. That means how long it takes for stuff to go through your gut and come out the other end. Okay. okay. Right. So, uh, what they found was that this one would take more than seventy-two hours. Oh, definitely me. Yeah. This, this uh, one, uh, like, uh, like uh -huh. within twelve hours, it'll be out. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so here will be like 24, 48 hours. When I do eat hot pot or huh. sushi, I need to go pretty much within. 10 minutes after the meal. Is that pushing something else out from before or could it possibly be that... No, something out from before. Okay. Mm. So there is this reflex where food in the stomach, particularly oily foods, it will trigger a response in your bowels to clear out. Okay. Right. It's a natural self-regulating. It's like your stomach is telling your bowels, clear out yesterday's load. You've got new ones yeah, coming down. Okay. But then as you know, what is the ideal type? I would say type 4 because type four. that's the most streamlined. So Hazel and I are very far away. What can we do? to attain a four, eat unhealthily. Okay. More oil. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, okay. More oil, Ma yeah. Approved by our doctor. Yes. yes. Wow. I'm gonna, yeah. just, just, <laughs> That's where we're going. It's, it's a bit of a myth with fibre. It's like, more fibre you, you take, the easier it is. But actually, fibre creates more stool. It creates a bulkier stool and maybe that's why it was so hard to come out. Okay, all this is honestly really good to know, but I feel I've totally lost my appetite. Completely <laughs> gone. I am not eating for the rest of the day. Hey, but we need to eat. Cannot, you need to eat. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Call. We need to eat. All right, when we come back, uh, we're going to share a story about a man who discovered that he had IBS in his prime and how it completely upended his whole life. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Let's Talk About Health. Now, we've been talking about IBS and the symptoms that come along with it. That's right. And IBS is not just about the physical discomfort or the inconvenience. It can be very mentally draining as well. So here's a story about a man who had such severe IBS that he did not dare to head on out to eat or drink at unfamiliar places. Taking the bus and train and eating out and exercising is very easy for everybody, but it's a very difficult task for me. If you ask me the nearest toilet along any highway in Singapore, I know in a heartbeat. KPE, PIE, BKE or any expressway. Hi, my name is Brian. I've been managing my irritable bowel syndrome for the past 12 years. So when I was 29 years old, I was driving down Mandai Road and just all of a sudden I feel urge, uh, a tummy ache urge that I wish to go to the toilet. So it was so sudden that uh, I just turned over to Mandai Zoo and I really thought it was just a, a single incident. 
So I had my first visit to a toilet on that very day. It lasted quite some time, like half an hour in the toilet. And I wasn't really sure what's happening, but throughout the whole day, the urge just came back at least five to six times for that day. But the subsequent happened for the next couple of days as well. Throughout this period, I reduced my weight um, drastically. I'm like 60 over kg. By the time I was only 52 there about. So after like prolonged or six months where I wasn't certain what's happening, psychologically it it, it develops a anxiety and a panic attack in me because you will never know when you need to go to the toilet or when you have the sudden urge or when will the ache will just come in. And this just naturally builds into you for the past six months subconsciously where the anxiety becomes a part of your life. My wife is a, a housewife, so I need to earn for the family. But imagine not having social life. You can't have lunch, dinner with your colleague. I'm always making excuses to stay inside the office where I know where the toilet is. I need to have a affirmity that there's a toilet there. If not, I'll, I'll be having my panic attacks. He became an uh, introvert. He wants to go out, but there's this internal struggle within him that he is like pulling him back. He don't dare to step up. He don't dare to go out. So it's like go down to like coffee shop or nearby coffee shop to like have our lunch, our dinner. Such simple task for a normal person is like such a difficult task for him. Eh? So I was on psychiatrist for two years and the two years I'll be on regular Xynex, I'll be regular on anti-depression, uh, mild anti-depression definitely. And I also might need to take Xynex before I sleep during that period. Because Xynex is, is, is a medication that calms you down, will slow your metabolism down. So the two years was a, was a huge struggle for me. Uh, most of the time, I will just keep quiet and stay by his side. Let him know that I'm there for him. Nothing will go wrong and nothing will happen. Just do what you need to do and I'm just beside you. If anything really goes wrong, I am there for him. So after two years of psychiatry treatment, I decided to maybe I should go and look for a gastro, gastro doctor to do a scope. And my first scope with Dr. Gui, Dr. Gui told me he removed 26 polyps in my, in my colon. So the polyps are small little lumps that will also irritate your whole uh, digestive system which will cause you IBS. So after removing, I felt much better. Dr. Gui also recommended me to take probiotics. It helps you to balance up your, your digestive system. As, as time passes, you will start to learn how to manage. Because at least your, your tummy don't, don't just growl and ache as and when it likes, once you start probiotics. What IBS took away from me was my social life. But what IBS trained me for the past 12 years is focus. And you have more time for family because I'm most of the time at home. Because of that, then you learn how to keep peace. It doesn't really matter you earn many millions or, or X amount of money, your IBS won't go away. So it becomes, it brings you to a point, right? You can thoroughly understand and see money clear and be self-contented in what you have. For me, I'm being forced in this situation I don't enjoy IBS, but I enjoy what I have today. <laughs> oh man! My goodness! Wow. My goodness! So, where is his state today? I mean, it, it is much better than it was before. Oh yeah, yeah. And I mean, uh, he had a business that was struggling around the time it started. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, this IBS made it much, much more challenging. For but sure. now he's overcome it, so he started a new business, doing mm -hmm. very well. Is there a specific test uh, to diagnose IBS or is it sort of... I think the most important thing to do to get to a diagnosis of IBS is really to spend a lot of time with the patient and ask a lot of questions. Uh, I think a good time will be like at least 20 minutes where you probe and ask how it started, when it started, what were the circumstances in which it started. And then you've got to know what are the specific symptoms that really bother the patient. And then you start thinking about like what's there in the patient's background, like their, their, their work habits, their diets, uh, whether they sleep well or not, and of course whether there's anxiety, uh, whether they, they're on certain medications. And then from there, you try to come to a preliminary diagnosis that this could be irritable bowel. But all the time, we're always looking for any uh, red flags where this may not be just irritable bowel. Right. You know, as, I think in Brian's case, I found that he actually had some mild inflammation as well. 
So giving him a course of antibiotics helped that too. We also found a small ulcer in the stomach and also had to treat that. But after that, things got a lot better. One well-recognised trigger for IBS is food poisoning. Mm. And that's why I did my research, where we found that uh, people who got food poisoning uh, had a higher chance of developing irritable bowel after that. Because when you've had a food poisoning uh, episode, there's quite a high level of inflammation in the bowel. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes a long time to settle. What if you do, if you are diagnosed with IBS, what are the treatments? I look at irritable bowel as a multifactorial problem. So everybody's IBS is different and the factors behind them are different. But let's say there'll be food-related triggers, there'll be stress, anxiety-related triggers, there'll be some kind of inflammation, maybe mm. some mild infection, and then there's going to be a, sometimes lack of sleep contributes, hormones contribute as well. So you've got to look at the whole uh, spectrum of what are the factors in an uh, individual, and then you try to identify them and work on every one of them. Yeah, and Doctor, you mentioned food just now. So I was just wondering, is there a diet plan for people with IBS? Like, I've heard of this term called FODMAPs. Mm. What are those? Well, FODMAP is an acronym oh, okay. for uh, fermentable sugars, a range of fermentable sugars that are found in many, many foods. And essentially, they boil down to plant-based foods and dairy products. Okay. Yeah. So how do they help? Well, more how they don't help. Because oh, they, they don't, don't help. help. They don't help. Oh. Fermentable sugars lead to gas production. When you've got lots of gas, it drives that strong urge to empty your bowels. And if you yeah. can't find a toilet, you're in the middle of KPE, you're going to be in trouble, right? Maybe mm. for people like Brian, it isn't so wise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so people like Brian should also not take milk, yogurt, cheese. Um, once you know how to overcome your IBS, there are ways to cheat the system. I see. So like, part of my job is to help the patient to have his cake and eat it. Mm, that's interesting. Alrighty, so now it's time for us to play a little game. Uh, we've got quite a few options yeah, well, this of is, food here. This is called, we'll call it the FODMAP game. So let's take a look at the apple and the orange here. Let's try and decide uh, between the four of us which one is lower on the FODMAP scale. So we want lower is better, right? Lower is better for IBS, IBS. patients. For yeah, yeah, for okay. gas. Okay. Yep. Should we say it together on the count of three? Okay. Okay, yeah. one, two, three. Apple. Orange. Which one Zane, is did lower? you say apple or orange? Apple. 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 Okay, so apple. I was the only orange. Yeah. Uh oh. You got it right. Oh! It's the balance of uh, the two sugars that are found in fruits. Okay. You've mm -hmm. got fructose and you've got glucose. Mm -hmm. okay. So the high FODMAP ones will have more fructose than glucose. So the excess fructose doesn't get absorbed and then it acts as a fermentable sugar and also draws water along and causes the diarrhea and the gas production ah. downstream. Right. So it has nothing to do with which one actually tastes sweeter, right? It's more just... To some extent, to some extent. Okay. Yeah, because fructose is definitely sweeter than glucose. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yep. Okay, cheddar cheese and yogurt. Okay. So which one is lower in Lower. One, two, three. Yogurt. Cheese. Oh, we only have one person who yeah, said yogurt. Yeah, yogurt. The three of us I mean, said yogurt. cheese. He got it wrong. Oh, yeah. so. I always get these wrong. Right, especially that kind of slice of cheese. That's like the worst you can eat, right? It's not even real. I mean, <laughs> no, that's the that's the lower FODMAP, right? Yeah. The cheese, Amongst so it's the, the better two. one. No, the, the right, hard, which is the surprising. Cheeses, yeah. The hard cheeses, the hard cheeses have low FODMAP. Okay. The oh. creamy ones have the higher FODMAP. Okay, um. okay. Right, got it. So if I don't want to pass so much gas, I take the hard cheese. Mm. Ah, got it. Okay. okay, okay. Okay. Now the last one, we have uh, bread and rice. Okay. On okay. the count of three. One, two, three. Right. Bread. <laughs> <laughs> I you said bread. I said bread. I said bread. Oh my okay. god. Okay. Mine's so the right. all out again. No, finally he got it right. Oh! Oh! Really? There seems to be so much sugar in rice. Yeah. White rice especially. They've tested all the types of grains mm -hmm. okay. to see how much gas they produce and rice produces hardly any gas. Wow! wow. Every, every so other grain, corn, wheat, oats are the worst, worst for producing gas. But no that's kidding. why it's the most healthy, right? Exactly. No, you got it right. Because when, because the good thing about rice is that it's fully digested and fully absorbed. So you don't have any residue, you don't produce gas. Mm. But the bad thing about rice is it's fully digested and fully absorbed, so you get lots of sugar going in. Mm. Right, okay. okay. Okay, guys, we do want to emphasize, though, that Foods that are low on the FODMAP, you don't have to worry about it if you don't have IBS, these, these severe symptoms, so don't stress. We're gonna go for a quick break, and when we come back, we'll stress you out about something else. I don't know. <laughs> 
Welcome back to Let's Talk About Health. And in this segment, we want to unearth more truths about our guts with Dr. Gui. Are we, are we ready? Yep, we're, gonna play we're ready. We're going to play a bit of a game. Okay. All right. So we're going to yell out a statement, and then we'll all throw this up, either fact or myth. And then, Dr. Gui, you can let us know if it's correct or not. Okay. First one, probiotics and prebiotic supplements are necessary to promote good gut health. I say fact. 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 Necessary. For sure. Because I take it every day. Please let it be fact. I know it's good. <laughs> it's good to do it, but I don't think it's necessary. Yes, you're right. Oh! So it's not necessary. Well, okay. It's useful, it's but, useful. but okay. we don't even know what's gut health. In the scientific world, there's no established criteria for gut health. Statement number two, our immune system is closely tied to our gut health. Uh, I would say that's a myth. Myth. I would say fact. Fact? I think they're starting to realize that it is. It is. Oh, man, so it's boys versus girls here. <laughs> oh. Is it fact a myth, Doctor? I, I mean, we are what we eat. So how we feed our gut and how our gut reacts to the food um, does impact a lot on our whole health. Mm. Mm. Essentially, you think of food as something foreign getting into our internal system. So at the gut barrier, there's going to be lots of immune cells ready to kind of decide what to do about this stuff coming down. And how your gut's immune system is going to react to it, that will determine whether you get impacted by it for good or for yeah. bad. Yep. Mm. But that's also where the probiotic comes in because in our gut, we've got lots of good bacteria, but also some not so good. And that balance provides a lot of processes that mm. lead to whether you feel comfortable when you eat or you know, whether you have regular bowel movements. movements. Yeah. So okay. I guess right. fact. Next one. <laughs> uh, how about uh, gluten? Can gluten cause symptoms of IBS? I would say gluten. fact. I would say fact. Gluten has now become recognized as a possible trigger for IBS. And oh. also that many patients, oh, if they look hard sh enough, people with IBS type symptoms, we may find some level of gluten sensitivity. You're giving me IBS right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all nervous, huh? Okay. So, Dr. B, after clearing up all my misconceptions about gut health, what is the one thing you would like our home viewers to take away from this episode? No, I, I think I will go back to our patient and just hope that his sharing, our sharing, will encourage any and every IBS patient out there to know that they can overcome it. Yeah. That mm. there's a lot of signs that we know. But you just got to be able to sit down, analyze it in detail, and, and take a holistic, truly a holistic approach and not just say this is just stress or this is just diet. Yeah. Mm. So for those of you out there who are struggling with this right now, just know that you're not alone. Other people have this and there's a way out. And, uh, you know, just get the proper help like people like Dr. Gui. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. Really enjoyed it. And our lovely panel over here. Uh, guys, you have been great. Hazel yes. and Zane, thank Dr. You for Gui. Having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. I learned so much today. Yeah. I no feel like we all did. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all did. For yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. This is a good lesson. Uh, and thank you guys at home. We'll catch you next time on Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, about Health. Health. Hey guys, if you like this episode, then you should check out our awesome online series called We Need to Talk About This on Me Watch. Women are more prone to constipation than men. Mm. So in my clinic, uh, for every 10 constipation uh, patients I see, probably two thirds are women or more. Mm.